Welcome to the tutorial, Adjusting the Velocity and Timing. So the first thing I'd like to talk to you about today is how to change the morphing sequence length. So to do this, you could either click on the source drawing or the destination drawing, and then just hold it down and drag it across. And now I've effectively changed the length of my entire morphing sequence. You can also select the source drawing, hold down shift, and click the destination drawing, and then move your entire sequence down the timeline to a new position. And then if you'd like to copy and paste your morphing sequence, you have to have the entire range selected like it is here. Right click on the range and select copy cells from the timeline. Then select the new place along the timeline where you'd like to paste the cells. Right click again and select paste cells in the timeline. And then I'm just going to delete these extra drawings between the two sequences so it's more clear. Like that. So the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is adjusting the velocity. So we already discussed it a little bit by looking at the ease in and ease out in the tool properties panel for the morphing tool. So I'm actually just going to change this one a bit so that the curve looks a bit more even. Um, and in fact I have to change it for both because they are their own individual entity. This is not a clone of this sequence. And let's play this back um, to see what it looks like. Actually, first what I'm going to do is grab this little black triangle and grab this little black triangle and bring them together so that the software will only play to the section between the two black triangles. And now you get a sense of that ease in and ease out in the sequence. So in fact, there's a second way to adjust the velocity of a morphing sequence, and that's by adjusting it through the layer properties. And this is useful if you have multiple morphing sequences, just as we do on a single layer. So you can make the adjustment here in the tool properties panel, and then an overall adjustment for everything for that layer. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So double click on your morphing layer to bring up the layer properties panel and if you're using animate you would have to go to the advanced tab if you're using animate pro you would stay in the drawing tab and you're going to go down to the morphing velocity at the end of the field you're going to click on the function button and what that does is it's now telling the morphing layer to use the uh, bezier editor to control the velocity of the morphing so we're going to click one more time on the same button to bring up the bezier editor so now what we're going to do is put keyframes where the source and destination drawings are for every sequence that we have um, on our layer. So I don't know if you remember, but our first sequence starts at frame 30. So let's go to frame 30, which should be here. We're going to add a keyframe. And then it ends at frame 40, so we'll go to frame 40 and add another keyframe. And then we have our second sequence at frame 60. So we're going to add a keyframe there, and then it ends at frame 70, which is about here. And if you want a more precise number, you can look here to see that you're in fact on frame 70. And I'm going to zoom in a bit as well. So when they mean reset view, they mean expand all your keyframes um, to the maximum amount in this view. And then what you can do is you can take the second keyframe, so the keyframe that sits on your destination drawing and move it upward. So it's always very important that the second keyframe is above the first keyframe. Then you can pull the handles out to make a nice curve. So something like that. The second most important thing to remember is that all of these keyframes must not be stop motion keyframes. So they all should have handles like this and they all should have lines interconnected between the, the keyframes. So if this option stop motion keyframe is checked, be sure to uncheck it so that it is disabled. So if perchance you decide to take the second keyframe um, and pull it below the first keyframe so that the destination keyframe is below the source keyframe, what that's actually going to do is uh, cause your morphing sequence to play in reverse. So I'll leave this like this so you can see what that looks like. The last thing that you can do is click on the hold value editor button and this will allow you to 
select arrange the start and stop frame and the number of steps you would like which means the number of exposures you would like to hold um, each frame for. So for example I could have my start frame at frame 60 I could have it end at frame 70 and I could have uh, two frames per step and say apply. So now you can actually see the physical um, staircase like shape between two keyframe points and what that does is it just holds each uh, frame for two exposures instead of one. So I'll say OK and I'm going to close this so you can see what this looks like. So the first one if you remember um, had a pretty normal curve um, and it's going to be compounded with the values from the ease in and ease out here in the tool property editor. So let's play to take a look at that. It's pretty normal. And the second one, um, because we had the second keyframe lower than the first, it should play in reverse and also be held for twice as long. So it went a little bit fast, but what it is is it's playing in reverse for sure because this is our first drawing. And if you see right now, it snaps to a circle and then morphs backwards towards a rectangle. Um, and it's harder to see that it's going slower, but it's actually holding every frame for two, so it's like skipping a frame. So it's a bit choppier. I don't know if you can see that, but effectively that's what the double frame exposure does. So that's it for the tutorial, adjusting the velocity and timing. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, morphing tool and hints.